What's good, everybody? It's your boy Banco Boxing Man. Hey, today it's gonna be Banco Boxing episode two. Stay tuned. Hey, yo, welcome. Hello. But what's good, everybody? Man, it's your boy Banco Boxing. Quick, if it's your first time. On the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, man, so you be notified of all the content I plan on dropping, man. Uh, but anyways, today, like I said, Banco Boxing Episode 2. Um, doing this on a Sunday, trying to get ahead of everything. Um, and I'll be talking about a plethora of topics today. Uh, uh, first things first, man, we had the uh, Julian J. Rock Williams versus Jason Rosario uh, fight yesterday. And I'm only talking about this one because it's the only fight I watched. I didn't really watch the Cobra fight. But anyway, man, uh, I'm going to talk about something like overlooking opponents, man. Um, from what I saw in the weigh-in and some of the press conferences, J-Rock was talking about he's going to peel his banana and stuff like that. And if you guys know, banana is what Jason Rosario has on his trunks. Um, really, I don't know what was going on with J-Rock. Maybe, you know, he got some silk sheets or whatever. Um, he had a really rough night, man. Uh, as much as Fox commentary tried to push him on everybody to tell you he was doing better than what he was. At times he was. He was catching him with some clean stuff. Granted, because he is the more experienced fighter because uh, Rosario's only 24 years old. But um, J-Rock just didn't seem like he had it all together. Like He didn't seem like he could pull it all together. Um in our group chat, uh, me and CJ Goodfellow was talking back about Mike. He was saying if Rosario goes to the body more, he might stop J-Rock. And before that, I was like, yeah, J-Rock in there looking shaky. I was paying attention to his legs. Um, J-Rock did get a cut early on in the fight. And I feel like that hampered him because he kept on pawing at it and then trying to punch. So it messed with him a little bit. But he said after the fight, that wasn't the reason he lost. So only he knows and only the coach knows why he lost. Um, but, uh... Yeah, man, uh, 154. Man, 154 is is a division right now, man. Like you said, J-Rock, Jared Hurd, Tony Harrison, Jamel Charlo, Erickson Lubin, Arizondri Lara. Uh, I think Hami Mogia is at 154. And there's some other guys that I don't know too much about yet until I go back and look at them. Those guys are there. And, of course, now we got the new one of the new unified champs, Jason Rosario there. Now, granted, he might be the easier person to beat, um, cause I mean, you know, he's 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 still a novice. He got he can crack though, he can crack. He's big. Uh, they got him listed at like five eleven. Dude's like six one. Dude, cause I think Tony Harrison is like six foot or six one. He might be bigger than Tony Harrison. Like no lie. Um, like I said in my video last night, it seemed like J Rock couldn't hurt him, and that's what it is. Uh. J-Rock has a rematch clause um, in his contract for this fight. Now, he said he's going to exercise it, but who knows? Like, that's a that's a tough fight. I mean, it happened so early, so maybe he can shake out of it. But that's always been his issue, even from the past. What well, now it's 2020, so four years ago, losing to Jamal Charlo, doing a lot of talking, it got caught and, you know, got, got knocked out. I mean, so he... Uh, he definitely has some issues. I don't know if it's stamina or with the chin or whatever, but uh, he got some issues. And I know people are going to be like, well, uh, Jared Hurd can do it, but Jared Hurd is a different style. Um, I'm actually going to talk about him a little later. But uh, Jared Hurd, the way he punches, is the reason why he didn't hurt J-Rock as much as he could. Um, he normally goes for well, his old style, which is the – overwhelm you with a whole bunch of punches yeah they had pop on them but they weren't just stuff where he was mixing up power and then catching you with some off guard you didn't expect um tony harrison called out jamel charlo on twitter uh asked him about a trilogy uh try to put that right here on the screen so you can see that um when you think about it uh jerry Hur got his soft touch then J-Rock, of course, going to exercise the rematch clause. So, Charlo really can't get them other belts right now. Uh, he's already beat Lubin, so ain't nothing for him to gain right there. Uh, I don't think he wanted to fight Laura. 
So maybe, you know, maybe he won't decisively shut Tony Harrison up for good. I think a third fight would be good. As you all know, Tony Harrison was kind of boxing his ears off in that fight, but due to some stamina issues and stuff like that, got caught. Um, like I said on CJ video, I think Tony Harrison needs to go to a snack with Victor Conte or something. Like, you know, his stamina's terrible. Uh, as for Jamel Charlo, he can still improve. I think he need another coach in there besides Derry James. That's going to help him use his size and use more of his athleticism to be more competitive at 154. I know people are like, well, he only got a draw and this and that, but no, nah, against boxers, he don't look too good. And that's the reason why they moved him like that. You know what I'm saying? If you put uh, Jared Hurd's stamina with uh, Tony Harris and boxing ability, I mean, he might be undefeated. He might have walked right through uh, Charlo because he was, he could just do it all. So a slick fighter going to bother Jamel Charlo all the time until he refined his skill set some more to adapt. But um, the state of 154 division is uh, it's pretty crazy, man. And so people have asked if you know 154 is the best division in boxing right now, and it might be. Uh, it might be because everybody's getting beat by everybody on any given day. One of these dudes can beat. So it's almost like heavyweight division in a sense too because – None of the dudes in heavyweight are just levels above the other person to be considered the best where you don't think nobody's going to win. So everybody is like, it's just different levels peaking here and there, seesawing to where if you don't come with your head on right one night, you can lose. You saw that with J-Rock and Hurd, um, the first Harrison-Charlo fight, the rematch with uh, Charlo Harrison. We saw it before with uh, Lubin and Charlo. Um... Uh, I mean, it is what it is, man. It's exciting. Uh, these guys have been in. The crazy thing about it is all these fights have been on Fox. These fights have been on Fox. Free TV. No pay-per-view. No showtime. Whereas you got the welterweights, all of them. Oh, I'm a pay-per-view star. I'm trying to fight on pay-per-view. I'm this and that. I'm the A-side, 60-40 and all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, man... You can't really count it, the number of hands last year, how many really good welterweight fights we had. I mean, I can count. Matter of fact, my fault. Let me retract that. You can count on your hands. Keith Thurman, Pacquiao, Errol Spence, Sean Porter. Two. Two fights. I mean, if you want to throw uh, Bud in there, I could, I could say Bud and Mean Machine. Three fights. You know what I'm saying? And all of them was pay-per-view. Okay, matter of fact, I'll take it back. I could say four with Keith Thurman, Josecito Lopez. I don't really consider Sean Porter or Ugas a... A really good fight. It was a boring, and the way Sean chose to box made that fight uh, not too appealing. So yeah, I say three or four. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, the only one that was considered to maybe had the top people in it. I mean, you could say Keith and Manny, but like I said, I don't know what Manny was on, but uh, Sean Arrow, you know, led up to the billing. So. I don't know, man. 147 takes from those 154. You can bounce back from a loss because you had a person like Tony Harrison that had been knocked out, came back, won a championship, and really never got to defend it. And I think that was his issue. And then J-Rock, same thing. You know what I'm saying? He This is his first defense. I don't know why you defended against this type of fighter. Maybe you looked at his record and him being young and – uh thought you could just walk right past him and walk right past him, but no. Nah. But, yeah, man, <laughs> like I said, man, shout out to Jason Rosario. Dude got a better win than Tank. I'm just going to say it right there. Tank ain't got a better win than this dude, and this dude is 24. Just like T.O. got a better win than Tank. So, Tank, you got to do something, baby. But um, next week, as you know, we got um, – well, not next week, I'm sorry. This weekend, Danny Garcia versus Ivan Redcash and uh, Jared Hurd versus Francisco Santana. I'm not doing no breakdown of that fight. Listen. It's a year to upset now. Danny Garcia get us about red cash. He needs to retire. But uh I expect that fight to end in like under five rounds. Um we saw red cash in there with Devin Alexander, but Devin Alexander is not Alexander the Great anymore. He's not fighting that he didn't fight that same dude. So I can't really put too much into that fight. I seen Danny look stronger against Granados and I expect him to KO Red Cash. I mean Danny's Doing this because he's been promised a bigger fight, hopefully pay-per-view this year. But at the end of the day, we'll see. I mean, 
I, I think I'm going to be busy this week anyway, so I probably won't even watch it, to tell you the truth. So, y'all keep me updated on Twitter with that. Then we got Jared Hurd versus Francisco Santana, who has a record of 25-7 and seven and one draw. Uh, this dude is a soft touch. As you know, Jared Hurd had a tough loss against J-Rock. And he's, I think he's with Shakir Stevenson's coach. I've seen him in the uh, gym with Mike Stafford. And what they've been working on with uh, Jared Hurd is uh, fundamentals. Um, some of the videos, I'm going uh, I'm to try to put some in here too, like while I'm talking so you can see them. And what they've been doing is, is uh, working on the fundamentals and getting them to utilize his height and reach. Instead of making these like instead of fighting like he's five five, fight like you five eleven. Same some something that needs to be done for Robert Easter as well. Um, but so I expect him to win. Now they may be trying to get him to go X amount of rounds uh, just to see how he can do with the new stuff he learned, or they he might try to close the show early. I don't know, but I'm picking uh, Jared Hurd to win that easy. And then, last but not least, uh, rumor mill is Robert Issa Jr. versus Chris Algieri. Uh, supposed to be in the works. Uh, I think that's a good fight. Let me see uh, when the last time Chris Algieri fought. Hopefully I spelled that right. Let's see. All right, so Chris Algieri is 24-3. and Three, three losses that came by, uh, what, KO? Not KO. But uh, only one by TKO, which is Errol Spence. So his last fight was against Tommy Cole uh, last June, June 1st. Uh, and they said this bout was supposed to be at 140 pounds. As you know, uh, Robert Easter's last fight was his debut at 140 pounds against Adrian Granados. And a tough, spirited effort he uh, did outpoint Granados. Um, I think this fight with Chris Algieri could be very interesting. Um, he's a basically at this point now a tough veteran. Like I said, only been stopped by Errol Spence. Um, he went full twelve with Manny Pacquiao, and he went twelve with Amir Khan. And he's been through some wars. He went through he beat Emmanuel Taylor, and went through a war with uh, Ruslan Provodnikov and won that fight. So, uh, having said all that, I think that's a good fight for Robert Easter to get his confidence up. Maybe they use some more wrinkles into uh, his fight with Algeri. I mean. Algeria don't shy away from wanting to fight tough guy macho style. But I think um, Robert Easter just try to box him. He's going to have to. I mean, as you can fight better and better competition at 140 pounds, 147, I don't know what the limit is for him to moving up because he has a frame where he can move up. Um, he's going to have to learn how to box more. He's going to have to. He, he's about 5'11". He got good power. He just don't fight tall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if he learn how to use, stay behind that jab and utilize that jab and uh, master his range and distance, uh, Robert Easter will be okay. So that's a, a good fight. Um, I favor Robert Easter in that fight. Younger, less wars. So I favor Robert Easter, but you never know. Like I said, it's boxing. Anything can happen. I don't know what network is going to be on. But I will be tuned in. But hey, guys, I uh, appreciate you for tuning in, man. It's more Banco Boxing. Hey, comment, like, subscribe. Share this on your social media. Banco Boxing, I'm out.